Hi everyone, welcome to episode 17. So today we're going to be looking at some weapon variation. Uh, the first thing I'd like to do is to implement an enum so that we can choose between three fire modes for our weapons, uh, automatic fire, burst fire, and single shot. So let's uh, go to the top of the gun script and create a public enum, which I'm going to call fire mode. And can call the three different modes auto, burst, and single. And then we can create an actual fire mode variable, just called fire mode. Um, so now, of course, if we go into the inspector on, on any gun prefab, we'll be able to choose which mode we want that gun to use. Um, so if we're in burst or single shot mode, it's of course important for us to know when the player has released the trigger. Um, so let's create two methods here, public void on trigger hold, and also a public void on trigger release, uh, like so. Okay, and we'll have a bool called something like trigger released since last shot. Okay, so if we're, if we're doing a single shot, obviously uh, we can't fire again until the trigger has been released. So that variable will set to true in the onTrigger release method. And in the onTrigger hold method, we'll first call shoot, and then we'll set that variable equal to false since we've now fired. Um, so the, the gun controller script is no longer going to call this shoot method directly. It's going to call these two methods. So uh, shoot no longer needs to be public. I'll just remove that. And uh, we'll now get an error in our gun controller script. Um, so instead of having public void shoot, we'll want to change this to public void on trigger hold as well. And this will call the equipped guns on trigger hold method. And then like in the gun script, we also want to have a public void on trigger release here. And this, of course, just calls, um, we, we first check if the gun is not equal to null, and then we call its on trigger release method. Okay, so now the last thing we need to do is to update those calls from the, uh, from the player script. So when the mouse button is held down, we call gun controller dot on trigger hold, and Let's make another if statement, if input, actually this is going to be quick if I just copy it, if input dot get mouse button up, so if we let go of the mouse button, then we can trigger the release method. Okay, so that's good. Uh, let's go into our gun script and uh, let's Let's uh, set up some variables for the burst fire. Uh, we want to know how many how many shots in each burst, so we could uh, maybe have a three round burst or a four round burst, whatever we wanted. Um, so public int we can just call that burst count perhaps, and then uh, we also want to have an int at the bottom here, just to keep track of how many shots we fired in our current burst. So we can call this maybe. Um, uh, shots remaining in burst, I guess. And in the start method, we'll set shots remaining in burst equal to the burst count. And also every time we release the trigger, that can be reset. So we can copy that. And then in the shoot method, um, we'll say if the fire mode is equal to burst fire, then with each shot, we'll want to decrease the shots remaining in burst by one. So shots remaining in burst minus minus. And uh, we of course only want to fire if there are any shots remaining in the burst. So above that, we can say if shots remaining in burst is equal to zero, then uh, obviously we can't fire. So we can just uh, return out of the method. Uh, so that should be working. Um, Let's also just add in the single fire logic. So here we can say if, or rather let's do else if fire mode is equal to fire mode, uh, oops, with a capital F fire mode dot single, then we can only shoot if, uh, if the trigger has been released since the last shot. So we can say if not, trigger release since last shot, then we also want to just return out of the method. 
Okay, let's uh, let's give that a try. Um, going to go onto my gun prefab. What's it set to at the moment? Okay, it's on auto. Let's test that that's still working. It does seem to be. Uh, I'll change that to burst and say give it a three burst count. That's also working nicely. And finally, let's just try out the single shot. That seems to be working as well. Okay, so now that we have these uh, three different fire modes that we can play around with, the next thing I'd like to do is to add in the ability to fire multiple shots at once. So let us, instead of just having a single muzzle transform from which we fire our one projectile, uh, I'm going to turn this into an array so we can have any number of muzzles. Well, I'll actually probably rename this to something more appropriate like uh, projectile spawn now. Okay. And then when we're, uh, when we're actually firing the projectile, we can loop through all of the projectile spawners that we have. So 4 int i equals naught, i less than projectile spawn dot length, i plus plus. Just enclose all of this in that, uh, in that for loop. Um, and then we'll just specify which projectile spawn we want to get the position of. So we just say i, and likewise for the rotation. Um, I think probably uh, for the effects like the shell and the muzzle flash, you just need to do those once. Uh, doing that multiple times is a little bit excessive, so I'll just put that outside of the for loop and save. So let's actually uh, test this out now. I'm going to drag my gun into the scene, and uh, if we go into the projectile spawn, I'm just going to uh, unparent the muzzle flash from that. Okay, and I'm just going to put this at the bottom here, call this projectile spawn 01, duplicate it, and call this 02. And uh, let me just move this one to the right, maybe rotate it outwards a tiny bit, and do the opposite for this, uh, for this other one. Okay, and then we can assign that to the projectile spawn array. Okay, let's hit apply, delete that, and let's give it a try. So, it seems to be working, we can now fire two shots at once, and of course we could do that for any number of projectiles. Alright, the last thing I'd like to get uh, implemented for this episode is just some trail effects for the projectiles. So let's uh, drag this bullet prefab into the scene, just focus in on that with F. And I'm going to go into the Effects tab and just add in a uh, Trail Renderer component. So if we just uh, move this bullet forwards in our scene, we'll see the trail appear. And uh, we'll probably want to turn down the start and end width so it looks more trail-like. Um, I'll set the end width to something small like 0 0.005. Uh, yeah, that looks pretty good. And we can uh, sort of specify how long the trail lasts for. Um, by changing this time parameter over here. I'll set that maybe equal to 0.2. Um, then we just need to give it a material. So I'll go into the materials folder over here, duplicate my bullet material and just call this something like tracer or trail. And I'm going to change this to a additive particle shader. Just set the tint color equal to white. Um, and if we go into the material section here, we can just apply that tracer material. And uh, if you wanted, you could also fiddle around with these different colors here. Um, so you could make it go from red to sort of orangey, yellow, whatever. Um, but I'm going to just keep these all white. And uh, I'm just going to play with their opacities a bit so that it sort of has this... Um, sort of gradual fade out, something like this. Okay, so it just decreases a little bit over time. Um, and I want to be able to just set the color of the entire, uh, of the entire effect. Um, so to the projectile script, I'm just going to add a public color variable 
um, called trail color with a small o and in the start method we can just get the trail render component so um, get component of type trail renderer and we'll get the material from that and set its color so we'll just use the set color method here um, and we can give it a string property name for the color value so uh, for the for this shader we'll want to set the underscore tint color uh, American spelling and we'll want to set that equal to our trail color variable all right so now um, let's just apply the change to this prefab actually I'll first just set a white trail there okay delete let's test this out okay so I'm just gonna change this to auto fire uh, okay so those trails are a little bit short so I'm just going to increase their lifetime um, oh did I set it to 0.02 it should be 0.2 it's more reasonable if we fire now they've got some nice trails and uh, can maybe set it set the trail color to a sort of lightish yellow and maybe set the alpha all the way down so they're quite transparent Let's test that out. Yeah, that looks pretty cool. I like that. Um, yeah, so w one thing I might just quickly do, uh, you might have noticed that at the moment, some of these lower obstacles, uh, we can actually just sort of walk over, which is not really ideal. Um, so we can just make the box colliders really tall. Uh, so so I set that to five, and then two at the center. And if we just uh, regenerate the map, you can see these guys are pretty massive now. So yeah, that's just a sort of uh, quick dirty fix for that problem. And uh, let's just test it out. It does seem to be doing the job. I can no longer get past that obstacle. So yeah, I'll uh, see you in episode 18. Cheers.